Hey, welcome to Mineral Talks Live, the weekly live webinar that brings you in-depth and in-person interviews with the mineral people from around the world. Mineral Talks Live is brought to you by a joint effort among the Mineralogical and Geological Museum at Harvard University, the Society of Mineral Museum Professionals, and Blue Cap Productions. Tune in every Wednesday and stay connected to your mineral world. Now, broadcasting live from beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii, the land of aloha, ukuleles, and shakas, this is Mineral Talks Live. Welcome everybody to Mineral Talks Live. Again, this is our weekly mineral-based webinar where we reach out to mineral people from around the world to connect them to the mineral community, reconnect us in, in this time of COVID-19. This is put on by uh, myself representing Blue Cap Productions, uh, Dr. Raquel Alonso Perez, who is the curate, curatix at uh, the Mineralogical and Geological Museum at Harvard University, and Dr. Eloise Gayou, who is the, who's representing the um, uh, Society of Mineral Museum Professionals. And so um, really happy that you could all join us. We're going to do an abbreviated start here because I want to get into this interview. This is really exciting. For those who are joining us for the first time, the way this program works is I'm going to be interviewing different people uh, who we've, in, we've invited to be our guests. And we invite all of you to interact with us at the bottom of the screen here. There are two ways that you can interact. There's the chat window and there's the Q&A window. The chat window is going to be active throughout the entire uh, interview. Although myself and the people that I'm interviewing, we can see the chat. We're not really going to be able to respond because we're focused on the interview. However, uh, Raquel and Eloise are uh, reading those chats, and Eloise can't respond this week because she's only broadcasting from her phone. She's been out skydiving, and she doesn't have her computer, but Raquel will be responding to people uh, in that chat. There's also a Q&A thing where you can en enter questions that you want either myself or our guests to respond to, uh, although we're going to change it a little bit uh, this time because we have, we're, we're going to be interviewing uh, both Ian and Deanna, and they're in two different parts of England. So if you do have questions, go ahead and ask them as the interview is going, and at certain points of time, Raquel will, um, she'll ask those questions of our guests so that they can respond right away. Uh, finally, there's going to be a thing that pops up at the uh, sometime probably about uh, 30, 20 to 30 minutes before the end of the interview. We're going to try to keep this thing to about an hour, and that's going to be a poll. And those are just kind of random questions. We're going to ask um, 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 Ian and Deanna to answer those questions. Uh, we're asking you to answer them as a guest to see how well you know Ian and Deanna. And so if you get... Um, let's say seven or more of those correct, we're going to have a special prize for you. And we're going to ask all of you to wait to the very end because uh, Deanna and Ian have been kind enough to give us the prize that we're going to give you this week, which is a fluorite specimen from their mines up in Weardale. I believe it's from the Deanna Maria mine. Yes, that's and, correct. Um, it, it is. Thank you, Deanna. And so it's valued at about $1,000. And so that's going to be the, uh, the free gift. And if you want that, and I'm sure all of you do, then uh, you're going to want to tune in to the very end, and we will give you the instructions on how you could potentially win that. Obviously, only one winner. So with that, let's get straight into the interview. Coming to us live from East Coker, which is the headquarters for Crystal Classics UK, we have the lovely Deanna Bruce. How are you doing, Deanna? Yes, very well. Hello to everyone. I saw a lot of people have logged on, a lot of familiar names. Um, shame we can't all chat with each other, but I hope you enjoy what we have to talk about tonight. And um, yeah, looking forward to this interview. It's a first for me, certainly, with Zoom. Excellent. Well, Deanna... Um, I know that you just recently acquired the finest of all possible treasures. Uh, maybe you could share that with us. Yes, yeah. So, was long in the making, was difficult to, to extract, um, but it's finally here. There oh, is and there's Annabella. Annabella. And like on cue, she is awake. Oh my god. Hello, <laughs> she's so cute. <laughs> Hello. Yes. 
So oh God, she won't she, she, won't she's be lying. Much. she has checked the cabinets over. But yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> so, oh He's mom, just, I've seen all these minerals before. <laughs> yeah, she said, Mom, why are we over here? <laughs> oh, so. excellent. And, Diana, and everyone is... is congratulating you. Yay, so just I want to pass the congratulations from the audience. Yeah, thank you very much. So she's 16 days old today. Oh my God. Oh my God. 16 days. Uh, yeah. First scene here for many. How, yeah. uh, how is she at night? How are you sleeping? Yeah, well, nights don't bother me so much. I usually have sort of a, a low in energy around two or three o'clock, but most of the time she says, no, mom, you don't have a nap. <laughs> So, yeah. But apart from that, she's very placid. So even if she's away, she's usually not a big screamer. I will jinx that probably for this interview now. But exactly. um, yeah, so she's normally like this, quite chill. Oh my God. Fantastic. And when will we expect to see her at the, at the mineral shows? Well, as soon as we can, really. I mean, she, she will be the star seller. I, I, I think I 100% agree with you. So uh, hopefully if uh, Munich still goes forward, then those of you in the EU will be able to uh, see Annabella live at Munich. Yeah, she will have her own booth, Baby Bruce Minerals. <laughs> uh, with the caveat that all the minerals have to be drooled on by her, correct? Totally, they are pre-approved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. Right. I, I, I try to put her down in her little, little cot so she can be a, a, like enjoying the talk. So, and I have another free hand. So, please excuse me for a second while I put her in her little crammy. Well, now, Deanna, as you're doing that, uh, obviously, we're all going to watch her grow up in the mineral world. Uh, tell us about you growing up in the mineral world. Oh, well, um, let me just come back. There we go. Um, so I basically grew up um, to a family that were absolute mineral nutters. So my grandfather was interested in minerals and they went out mineral collecting every weekend. So whenever we had a family walk, it was disguised as let ha let's have a family walk. By coincidence, it was always a mineral location. Um, so eyes on the ground. So I not grew. I didn't grow up um, going much out and about, looking actually people in the eye. I would always look on the ground because that's <laughs> you weren't shy. Important. You were just looking for minerals. <laughs> exactly. So um, and yeah. So my grandfather was actually a very enthusiast, uh, enthusiastic mineral collector, and he discovered uh, nine new species. Wow. Uh, of minerals in, uh, in the Schneeberg area. And one is named after him, which is Schliegelite. And there was an article written by Malcolm Southwood uh, last year in the October, September issue of the Mineralogical Record. So, so that was quite pleasing and quite, um, yeah, quite something. And my dad and my mom, they are basically small time mineral dealers in Germany and they, um, do their own two shows. So they have shows in uh, Saxony. I grow up in a mining area, silver mining, very famous um, for the silver wires from Schneeberg um, or Hartenstein and Schlima. So my life was always minerals. And I really didn't want to earn my money like this. So I always said with 16, I will never do this in my life. <laughs> famous last words. Exactly. And then um, I ran, oh, well, I met Ian at the Munich show now, gosh, almost 13 years ago. So, and the rest is history, as they say. And I believe you were quite goth at the time, yes? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> no yes. photographic it's evidence. Guys. <laughs> the smoky eyes. Yeah, black hair, all black. Yes. Yeah, well, I've heard Ian often say uh, how, uh, as, as everybody who knows Ian uh, knows, he's very good at the banter, and you were able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, and at that point, he just said, wow, this woman's for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like when you find a mineral, a fluoride in the mine, for example. They don't look like this when they come out. They're dirty, they're a bit grubby, they need a bit of tender love and care, and that's what I needed. So I got this with Ian. Oh, my heart just melted. Congratulations, <laughs> both of you. <laughs> oh, 
true. Now, Deanna, you are in the showroom of Crystal Classics there in East Coker. Um, we're getting little teases of what it looks like. Why don't you kind of show us around and tell us what we're looking at here? So um, this, this is our showroom in um, East Coker. And uh, we are open to the public by appointment. We usually have quite a lot of traffic, uh, a lot of international customers and clientele come and visit us. And we also host two open days a year, one usually in the summer, in the beginning of June, and one in the end of November or beginning November, depending, um, depending when, we, um, when the weekend falls and what other shows are circulating around. And um, yes, so this is um, our showrooms. We have usually 15 to 18,000 specimens. So all our drawers are filled. Our showcases are decorated nicely. Um, the various, so here you have the gem cabinet. So you see some of our really yeah, wonderful doors from our project that we did in Ukraine with the Volivars um, properties there. So you see those really nice limey green um, Heliodor crystals. Um, this one is from an old collection. Um, that is not one we uh, distract or uh, subtracted while we are doing the, the mining project, while the other two actually are. So this is from a private collection from the, um, our business partner that we work with. And was um, extracted probably two to three years ago. And also these ones were found when we were doing the project. So you have various different gem minerals. So it, it from Pakistan, Brazil, Afghanistan, so you name them. And I just sort of themed it a little bit more after colors rather than species. And when we go further on, so you can see all our drawers here are filled with minerals. So for example, here is um, three whole banks of drawers just with minerals from Germany. So we cater always for a wide range of, um, yeah, collectors um, profiles. So whether that is gold specimens. So here you have a really lovely eagle's nest mine gold specimen with the wonderful matrix. Fantastic. So you, you see those, you have um, little rarities which you don't see too often, which is for example, a Hope's Nose Gold. So from the UK, comes with wonderful old labels. So this is also one of our specialities that we always try to keep history intact and together with um, specimens. So when we buy and we buy probably more collection than any other mineral dealer worldwide, we always have a real focus on the provenance, so keeping old labels, keeping the history together. Now that there you have- so incredibly important to any, anyone coming uh, newly into the mineral collecting world, that provenance is, is just golden. Yes, it is. And it becomes more and more a focus for new collectors that are looking for specimens, basically getting a pedigree with the specimen. If it's not newly mined, if it has been out of the ground for a long time, the mines have been closed, they want to know the history. Where does it come from? Whose collection did it came from? That is really important and it, it can't get lost. So you have a really wonderful blue theme cabinet there. You have a nice azurite from Bisbee. I saw earlier someone from Bisbee logging on. So nice azurite from that locality. Wonderful sort of um, medium large cabinet size specimen. So in our blue themed. That's the blue case there. <laughs> yes. And we are going into rhodochrosite. So everything is rhodochrosite from various different localities. So you have the typical, what they call the dog tooth rhodochrosites from Nchwaning. Those are so iconic. So then you have, of course, you have, for example, then an Australian rhodochrosite. I love that. So we, we try to really sort of theme it so that you have from a really super cute small specimen from Romania. Much better like that. That's great color. So, and yeah, you name it. Germany, the famous wolf mine. 
Uh, I love it. We had, we had our audience so hungry for uh, rotoclosite last week when we were with uh, Raquel at the Harvard Museum. And so this is probably satisfying a lot of that, uh, that need for red. Yeah, so, so those were those, those stalactites, they are quite famous. So they always have them sliced and then polished. So I find those always really cool. They look like, like grapefruit slices to me. Yeah. So there you have this whole variety. So all rhodochrosites. So here's a nice, a sweet little one from um, Peru. So it's, it's really a nice selection. And we go over to our yellow, Diana, orange. We have a question yes. from the audience. Uh, they want to know more about your Boldarsk Palinsky project. Okay, what do they want to know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know much, maybe. Yeah. Um, what we basically did, we, um, um, Ian, Ian approached, or Ian was, and we were approached um, actually to, to um, whether or not there would be a possibility and they didn't have um, geologists that would have done or didn't know whether or not there would be still product left. So Ian went there and um, basically helped them for uh, looking and establish where would there still be pockets left if there's still um, heliodor left. So, and the, uh, Ian possibly would be better to, to explain how we did all this because he was more traveling out there as he had more the mining, with his degree of exploration mining geologist, he had more the experience and he was just further on site. I unfortunately only managed to be twice out in the Ukraine, but was um, lucky enough uh, to be there while they were um, finding some huge, huge, uh, not specimen grade, but more sort of carving great um, heliodors and um, that afternoon we found two parts of a broken or separated crystal that each weighed nine kilograms. So that was certainly something really, really incredible. And um, yeah, um, exciting. <laughs> so yeah, so but we also do, if, if people want to know more, we have a, actually we have it written up uh, under our website of ukminingventures.com. We do past projects and we have an article written up how we started uh, that project and what we did during our project. Um, so if people are interested, they can visit um, ukminingventures.com and look under past projects and uh, can read all about our time there. Perfect. Ventures, Raquel, Ventures. Thank you. <laughs> Ventures, okay. Yay. Well, we've and got some okay. great uh, photos of uh, those, those heliodors that you were talking about that we took while we were in the Ukraine that maybe yeah. we can uh, release to the viewers afterwards. Uh, you can remember that, Brian? Yeah, I'll try. My little pea <laughs> brain doesn't always work, but I'll try. Oh, no, you can remember your visit. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can, re well, parts of it. <laughs> <laughs> Diana, someone is commenting on the nice Ethringite. Oh, yes. Um, this one, the super <laughs> limoncello. Yeah. Outstanding. Quite, the color yeah, is just fantastic. It's not quite complete as a crystal, but the color is just so acidy. So it looks really unreal that nature can produce colors so vivid and so uh, supernatural almost. So, and that is what I wanted to also show. I mean, I really wanted to do a color themed cabinet because those different shades of yellow that go in sort of a limey green, I mean, this, this mimetite from Allura is just crazy. There's not many Allura mimetites known of that quality. So, um, what is also really nice, the Sturmanite. So I love it how that crystal is just perched right on top. I think that is a fantastic specimen. Also a nice classic from Slovenia, Wolfenite from Misk. Now, Deanna, you have a lab there in East Coker. So uh, when necessary, you guys can trim and repair, correct? Yes, we can. So we are um, able, we have a fully kitted out lab, so we are able to process huge collections, which uh, makes it very 
fortunate. So we don't have to outhouse our trimming or cleaning. Um, we can really do it all in-house, be there, and um, certainly um, guide sort of how we want to have a specimen shaped or trimmed. And that's really something that makes this quite easy. So this is also cool, a zircone from Norway. Wow. So nicely isolated, this crystal, good luster, and this, this sort of um, dark red, brownish color. I think things like this. Sometimes a specimen doesn't have to be the largest to be really interesting. Also really nice, this spethertine from Australia. Huge crystal. Fantastic, wow. And then we go, so I needed to tone it down. So we have a gray cabinet. <laughs> so featuring basically gray and black, and that is not necessarily something that's, that's um, ugly. I find gray specimens like silver minerals really attractive. Um, super cool, I find the discrocyte from Australia. So nice. Well, a lot of times in America, it's referred to as the black uglies, but uh, for true uh, people who love minerals, they are uh, nowhere near ugly. They're fascinating. I, I grew up in Saxony. All minerals were gray and ugly, so I became <laughs> to love them. So super cool proustite. So from Marian back, so, so it, it doesn't show, but it actually with a nice strong light, it actually is still nice and red. So even though it looks like it's tarnished, it is actually really nice and red. Wonderful. Um, yeah, so like I said, oh, classic as well, Hesite from Romania. So we are really well known for our in-depth selection of, of our stocks. So we have from the European classics, which we're obviously well known for. Um, we have new finds, um, none of the least from our own mine that we're operating, the Diana Maria mine and the Rotterdam mine, which is currently under care and maintenance. But we are able to really have the best of both worlds. So you have the old collections. And then I really was fascinated by the fact that you can go out and mine things yourself. So I was really intrigued with this. So we have now greens. So, and with the greens, of course, so on the bottom shelf, we have some African uh, contenders. So for example, the famous Sumer mine, this one is cool. This is a baldonite of the cerusite. So one crystal and the green baldonite has just covered the cerusite crystal. So you can see just um, how, so I find them cool um, to, to, to the variety and the shapes and forms. It's just, you know, it's always hard to choose what to decorate in your, in your showcases. And the fluorides, um, we also, there you have the um, a super cute little specimen from the Papa pocket. So my dad was mining that pocket um, last year. So we called it Papa pocket, really gemmy, um, clear twin fluoride crystals on matrix. Um, a side project I started doing is jewelry. So the jewelry you see is cut stones uh, from fluoride. So I designed it myself and um, that went really well, was first premiered in Tucson this year. But you can see, I mean, this is everything is just really, really fascinating and intriguing. And even if you just have one species like fluoride, they come in so many different various combinations. So here you have, for example, a nice one with a galena. So you see this nice galena crystal. Um, on in the combination with the fluoride crystals. This is lovely and it's, it's Was just- Was that one with the Galena from the Diana Maria mine? Um, there were two. So you found some in the Rotley mine. So this is a Wolfie pocket one, but we found actually a concentration in the heavy metal pocket in the okay. Diana Maria mine. So um, they, are, they are always, so the mines are close together, which Ian will explain to you later when we switch over, but it is, uh, so you find sort of similar combinations. Diana, now, Diana, going correctly. back to the jewelry for a second, you're showing us some of the uh, kind of the higher end. You also have a, a secondary line of jewelry that uh, I forget the term that you use to describe it. Oh, um, I described it as boho jewelry. So basically what I've done is I took um, sort of some small little twin crystals such as these 
and just put a cap or a bezel setting around them. So, and they are also set with a nine to five si uh, silver, so sterling silver, but they are kept as a natural fluoride crystal. So it's more of a boho style. Um, while these ones are really sort of the higher end cut stones and they are still kept their daylight fluorescence. And I just on this occasion want to, there's just been an article in the Journal of Gemology um, featured about um, the fluoride and uh, the daylight uh, fluoride and their daylight fluorescence. So they just done the properties of green fluoride from England showing daylight fluorescence. So there's a wonderful article also featuring some of my jewelry, which I was very, very pleased that uh, Brandon Lars was doing his article and I just received the magazine a few days ago. So I was, I was very chuffed with that. Great. So you have, um, we can see in the photographs there, you have gold mounted uh, cut fluorites. In the display case, you have the uh, silver mounted. So they're available in both. Um, currently, I'm just having another order or another um, lot designed and I will have a new um, shape. So at the moment we have trillions, ovals, and rounds, but I will um, swap the ovals out and the gold jewelry has completely sold out. So I'm waiting for new production, but because there's so little, um, there's very little material that's coming um, out that's cuttable, uh, that it's very, very limited availability. Diana, we have a few questions from the audience. Do you yeah. do the faceting and setting yourself? Uh, no, I don't. So I have a professional. So I was working with with someone helping me to design a cut and uh, what would work with the fluorides. And um, therefore, uh, I'm not doing the cutting myself. I did a, a Gem Basics uh, degree with Gem A last year in the beginning just to familiarize myself a little bit more. Um, and I'm very interested, but because my main occupation is really sticking with the minerals, supporting Ian with Crystal Classics, that this was just a little side project, so which I very much enjoyed, right. but uh, it's just supposed to stay a, a little bit of a side project, and I don't want to mass manufacture because it's simply not possible. And it was really just to show that also fluoride, because now the market gemologies or gemstones is more open to unusual gemstones. Fluoride is normally classed as way too soft to be worn in jewelry, but I think there's a new trend so, so that you can really say that you can be a bit more adventurous, that softer stones are actually used in jewelry. And as long as you wear them with uh, just as earrings or pendants and you are taking good care of your jewelry, um, it, you will have a longevity and, and, and can enjoy your jewelry item for a long time. Wonderful. Deanna, yeah. we're going to cut up to Ian up in uh, Weardale, but before we leave you, can we take one last look at Annabella? Sure. She's probably still some coat <laughs> in her little crammy. What's she doing? She is out. Look at that, sweetheart. Oh. Yeah. All right, Deanna, well, thank you so Ooh. much for giving. Wow. <laughs> I think she is afraid of my voice. <laughs> All right, Deanna, thank you so much for giving us a tour of your uh, headquarters there. And uh, I believe uh, people can come if you're in England. How far are you from London? We are roughly two hours by train from London Waterloo. And there's a train station at Yeovil Junction right, uh, right here. We can pick you up if you free range or some problem. Um, by car from Heathrow, similar, two hours southwest, a direct, direct uh, journey. And um, you are here. And yeah, everybody's welcome. We just have to prearrange your visit. Obviously, we need to make sure that we are um, obeying with the new COVID rules when we have visitors in our office. So please prearrange it. But everybody is always very welcome. Okay, well, uh, a point, uh, they can visit you by appointment. Yes. Um, great. Okay. We're going to cut up to Ian live in Weardale. Deanna, thank you again. Take care and give Annabella a hug and kiss from all of us. Will do. Thank you so much. And thanks for having me. Cheers. Good evening from Weirdale, everybody. It's, uh, 
it's a beautiful, beautiful weird old summer's day here. The wind is blowing and um, the trees. <laughs> so I'm stood, um, I'm stood here opposite the the uh, the Anna Maria portal just to show everybody how it looks. So this is the uh, the Anna Maria mine, which is now nearly three years old, and uh, it's uh, it's come a long way since since we started. The uh, the tunnel you can see there on the the right now goes in about probably about a quarter of a mile and um, it goes straight into the hillside. It's an east-west fault um, that we follow and uh, up on the hillside you can see a group of trees and under the third furthest tree away from us um, that's where the vein, which is what the Diana rear mine is based on intersects the, uh, the Rogerly vein, the green bank vein and that was the that was the whole purpose of the, the project, to uh, try and get to where the two veins intersected. And um, we're going to be showing you some very exciting specimens today that uh, we've literally just found. So um, I'm going to cut to you, Brian. I think you've got some historic footage to show of Brian from when you were here a few years ago. And um, I'm going to drive over to the portal. And by the time you finish the film, I should be there. Excellent. OK. All right, let's uh, switch back to my camera if we can. Raquel, can you spotlight my camera here? There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is this is a flyover. You can see in the lower part of the screen, uh, you're going to be able to see the highway there. But what we're doing is we're flying straight towards the Rogerly mine. And the Rogerly mine is right there in the center of the screen. And as we get closer, you'll see the mine in more detail and you'll see the mining area surrounding uh, the portal. Uh, for those of you who've seen uh, photos of this, uh, you'd become very familiar with uh, that portal, I'm sure. And that's the portal right there in the center of the screen. We're going to cut in for a little bit of a closer view. I'm sure that looks very familiar. Now, um, the Roger Lee mine obviously is uh, famous for many, many years, and the Deanna Maria is relatively new. This is where they are in relation to each other. Center of the screen is the Roger Lee. And as we pan to the left, that dump that you see there, that's the Deanna Maria, or what will become the Deanna Maria mine. Uh, taking the road from the, um, from the Roger Lee over to the Deanna Maria, it's, it's only a few minute drive, uh, not that far at all. You come right up against the cliff there, and then we head up the incline. And what you will see is uh, the outcrop uh, back when, before any of the tunneling had started. And there is Deanna right there watering down the outcrop. And you can, if you look closely, a little bit left of the center, you can see the uh, fluorite being exposed to the, uh, to the elements there. And we're going to cut, right, or we're going to fade to a close-up shot. And that's basically what it was looking like. Uh, about two or three years ago. And you can see some beautiful twin crystals there, blue because of the sunlight. Here's Ian talking about uh, one of the bigger pieces that we found and we had to cut down using the diamond chainsaw that they have on site there. And there's Ian, as you've probably never seen him before, uh, muddy and disgruntled. But uh, those are a lot of the pieces that came just from the outcropping of the Deanna Maria. So that kind of gives you a pretty good idea of uh, where they are in relation to each other. They're actually quite close to each other. And uh, hopefully by now, uh, Ian is at the portal. And why don't we cut back to him? So welcome to the uh, the Anna Maria mine. It's, um, it's, uh, it's been a long few days and very exciting because uh, just, uh, just as if by magic, and it wasn't staged, we found this, uh, we found this, um, uh, pocket literally uh, two days ago and uh, we um, right on the intersection of the Sutcliffe and the, the um, Green Bank vein and we managed to get it on film and uh, it took about two days to cut it out so we managed to cut out a huge fluoride geode which is actually very impressive because it's full of gem twins and it's very very rare to get something as big as this and you know thank you Jakob and uh, Mike and and uh, Joe and uh, everybody that worked 
on the pocket because uh, it, it was a real joint effort to um, to get this thing out in one piece. And we're going to wheel it out of the mine um, for you. And it's the first time this has been out. It's uh, it's been underground for for millions of years, and we're quite excited to to get this thing back to East Coker down to the lab and um, see what we can do with this specimen because it's it's actually pretty pretty damn good. So Joe, my son is. Um, is working here for the summer and uh, he's going to wheel it out um, for us to see. Um, you know, we're all wearing face masks here at the mine. Um, we're able to operate under very strict COVID coronavirus uh, regulations. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's affecting everybody, but at least now we have to be enclosed for several months. We can open the mine again. And um, Joe's going to wheel it out for everyone to see for the first time. Ian. Oh, they are coming. Okay, we have a question. Are they Diana Maria and Roger Lee in the same old quarry? Um, yeah, they're quite a way apart, but uh, yeah, basically they're in the same quarry, yeah. Wow. So the light's, uh, the light's pretty bad now, but um, this is... Uh, this is one big geode. It's very rare to get something like this. It's almost like a geode. It is. It's a huge, look at that, just one big dish of uh, fluorite twins. Our audience is like, wow, on upper cases. <laughs> so that, yeah, so you get the feeling from the audience. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah, it's a real shame that um, there's no sunlight at the moment because in the sunlight, I, I think this would look amazing. Um, you know, the light is, it's evening time here and the light's failing, but, uh, it's, um, it, it really is quite impressive. What's the matrix on that kind of, uh, rocks? It's, um, it's, it's all, uh, all ironstone, limestone, but, uh, it's turned, uh, it's been hematized. So it's, you know, it's been altered slightly, but, uh, the crystals are up to, up to an inch. Now, with Any all those specimens? gems, the, when, when you have the twin fluorites, you really have the gemminess there. And uh, Ian, maybe you can get close to some of those uh, fluorites there so we can see them a little bit better. Yeah, oh, let, nice me just, thumb. let me just flip this. Raquel showed me how to flip it yesterday, but it's not flipping. Here we go. There we are. There we go. So that's, uh, this crystal here is about an inch. Fantastic. What's the name of the pocket? We haven't named it yet. It's a new <laughs> pocket. Found. Yeah, <laughs> we just haven't named it yet. So it's. Uh... Do you have a torch or a flashlight so we could see the color change more dramatic, more dramatically? Uh, no, we don't, unfortunately. Someone suggested it should be called a Navella pocket. <laughs> yeah, thanks, John Carlo. Maybe, maybe it should be. <laughs> Covid nineteen pocket. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh no, no, definitely not that. <clears throat> so, uh, so Caroline this is Naski, the mass, uh, mass miner. <laughs> Ian, someone, Caroline is asking, how are they both blue and green at the same time? If you can briefly explain that. The fluoride from my mind is uh, very, very famous, and. Uh, um, it's, uh, it's one of the most daylight fluorescent uh, fluorites on the planet. And uh, it's, uh, there's quite a high u europium and yttrium content, which gives it some daylight fluorescence. And uh, they look very different under, under cabinet lights and under sunlight. So I've got some small pieces here as well. And uh, these, um, maybe I'll do it like this. Oh, yeah. So this is from the same pocket. These these came out uh, these came out yesterday, but uh, very the, the the fluorite in Diana Maria is very very fresh. A lot of fluorites have white centers, but you know our, our um, fluorite from here is super gemmy. So those all came out yesterday. These all came out yesterday. We're very we haven't quite seen how how big the pocket is yet. We're hoping it continues, and it's a very slow process to uh, to mine specimens successfully. You have to just take it so slowly. And um, we, we think this pocket should continue for, 
you know, maybe maybe two or three more weeks, but uh, we'll we'll know when it's finished. Wow. So Ian, what are the biggest challenges finding and mining the fluorites there? The biggest challenge is um, running any commercial mining operation. As anybody that does it will tell you, um, the hardest thing is is you know you have to do it safely, and safety is safety is everything. You know we have a, a good group of miners here. We take it very responsibly. Um, we do everything everything the way we should do. It's uh, you know it's not the cheapest operation. The, the whole operation, um, the monthly bill, you really don't want to know. But uh, we we enjoy it. We enjoy it. You know, and if you do your, if you use some clever geology, then you can usually find you know a pocket where it should be. And that's uh, you also need a lot of luck. Do you find in more colors than the blue and green? Yeah, that's one of the good thing about uh, one of the good things about the Diana Maria mine is that we find yellows. We've had very nice yellows. Um, but we've had some truly awesome, incredible purples. Uh, some of you would have seen from the, the Weird Ale Heather pocket and uh, some of the others, the 4th of July pocket. I know Kate's online there and uh, Kate was here. Um, Kate was Kate Donovan was here last year when we found the 4th of July pocket, which was truly wonderful. Produced some of the best purple fluorites that uh, Weird Ale has ever seen. Now, Ian, for a long time, the plan was as you started driving tunnel at the Deanna Maria to intersect where the vein in the Roger Lee was going. When you hit that, was that the deep purple pocket? No, no, that came from the uh, the northern the northern what we call the northern flats. So we have different okay. pocket zones in the mine running along the vein. Um, this uh, this specimen I just showed you, the big cavity, this mm -hmm. came from almost exactly on the intersection. Wow. Okay. So that's been two or three years that you've been planning to get there, and you you just arrived. Yeah, we've literally just arrived. We've had some some fairly, fairly formidable challenges, but uh, it's worked out. It's worked out very well. We've enjoyed doing it as well, and um, you know, I've, I think I've got one of the only wives in the world that really wanted to have her own mind, so she has it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have another question. Have other minerals been found? Other minerals, yes. We. Um, We've had very, very good galenas. We get very nice calcites. Um, we've had small cerucites, uh, smithsonites. Um, that's about it. We don't. Uh, we get occasional svalorites, but not very good. Um, the mines of Weirdale, there's not a huge variety um, of, of mineral species here. Um, but we're happy just having the fluorite. I bet. <laughs> and more of a technical question. What causes the frosty white centers of the cubes in some of the fluoride specimen from the Roger Lee and the Ana Maria mine? Is it an yeah, inclusion a, sometimes? It, I don't think anyone's ever really done the work on it, but it's, um, I think it's because the crystals are growing too fast and when they get too big. The, the, the small jemmy ones seem to be the ones that, uh, that crystallize furthest away from the from the veins, so they're, they're probably cooling at a slower rate. And, um, you know, we get fabulous twinning on them, which is uh, also very characteristic of weird fluorites. <laughs> Do you see any difference between the Diana Maria and the Roger Lee minor specimens? Yeah, quite a lot of difference. Um, they're, they're different veins, they're totally different vein systems. One vein is, uh, um, the Roger Lee vein is, is north-south and uh, Diana Maria is, is east-west, more or less. And um, there's there's quite a project, uh, quite a um, quite a crystal variation in colours. Uh, we get a lot more associations in Diana Maria. We get them with quartz, growing on quartzes. Um, Roger Lee is more or less just green fluorite. There's, there's some some associations sometimes, but they're they're, they're slightly more rare. Do you mine through the winter? We do. Yeah, we're lucky. We don't get too much snow here. We lose a few days a year, but uh, it's not too bad. I see. And someone that is not necessarily a collector, would it be possible to... What are the chances for an amateur collector to actually find a good piece of fluoride? And will you have Depends to... which part of the world they're in, really. Um, mm -hmm. Some countries have a lot of fluoride, others don't. Um, but... Uh, you know, if someone's interesting, if they're an amateur, it's probably good to go and join uh, a local mineral club or go to a museum, talk to the, uh, the, ni the nice friendly curator. 
and uh, you know sometimes you can be pointed in the right direction thank you Brian, so sorry I took over today. So many questions from the public, <laughs> from, no, the, that, from that, the audience. That's exactly so. what we talked about at the very beginning, <laughs> that uh, people were going to ask questions and we were going to just interrupt the um, interview and answer those questions right off because I think uh, so many people are fascinated. Not a lot of people have seen uh, live footage from a mine. I, I honestly don't know when that's been done before. Now, Ian, I also have some footage queued up of um, the, the extraction or parts of the extraction of that piece that you just wheeled out. You want me to roll that and you can narrate what we're seeing? Oh, yes, please, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so then uh, Raquel, why don't we highlight my, or spotlight my camera? And let's go with the footage here. So this is the specimen um, when we first found it. So the specimen you just you just saw the, the geode. This was just after the uh, just after we found it and we cleared the blast pile. And behind the blast pile, we started to find a seam of fluorite. And on the left hand side there, that's the geode before we extracted it. That is great. So that's uh, that's been in the that's been there for for millions and millions of years, and uh, it's just about to uh, we're going to show you the whole process of how we took it out. Yeah, that's very interesting. So you go with like a chisel and you hammer surrounding the areas. How do you decide how to not damage it and bring it out? Well, it's, uh, you know, collecting specimens underground is very, very challenging. So how do you go about that? Well, you know, we're very, very lucky to have um, some very skilled miners who, you know, who, who do it better than anyone else could. It's, uh, you know, Simon is our head collector. He's, um, he's, he's absolutely brilliant at doing this sort of thing. Um, Jakob, he's our, our geologist. And Mike, he's uh, one of our good collectors. And between them, it was a very much a group effort. So, you know, you've got solid limestone around that, uh, around that specimen. And if we, uh, if we move to the next slide, Brian, or the next shot, All right, we, can, we, um, we can see, you know, there it is taken out so it just happened it was it was you know it was jointed naturally jointed so we didn't have to chainsaw this one out um quite often we'll spend two or three days chainsawing a major piece like this out um we were i guess slightly lucky with this because it was uh, naturally broken around it so after removing all the matrix around it we were able to uh, to prize it out and there it is sat on those boards waiting now to be um to be cut down. All right, um, I'm going to go to the next video. Okay, so there it is, actually out of the ground. It's you know, still underground, but uh, actually out of the uh, out of the rock and sat on the bogey, waiting to be wheeled out. So that was about two days' work to do that. And you can see how green they are there because we just have the incandescent uh, light on it. And the good thing about the Diana Maria fluorites is the um, the ground is very tight and it's very fresh. So the the, the crystals are super lustrous, um, you know, very unaltered. They're, it's uh, it's a very good uh, very good vein, the succulent vein, much uh, much fresher generally than Rogerly. That is fantastic. And Ian, maybe you can take us back to the live view of uh, the piece out in the sunlight, having just seen the piece underground. Um, well, we probably could, but my very efficient son has just, <laughs> wheeled, has just wheeled it. <laughs> 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 he, he may just be a little bit hungry, so it's like, uh, Dad, I'm putting that one away. <laughs> we played enough rocks today. We're going to go and eat some chicken. <laughs> Dad, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. so sorry about uh, that. Raquel, no, are there any you. other questions? If not, we're going to go to the um, 10 questions for Ian and Deanna, if she's still online. Yes, I am. Great. Raquel, do we have any other questions from the viewers? Yes, we have a few more. So one of them, how does a geo like that form? Um, it's dissolution. So along the folks, uh, it's, it's, you know, it, the best thing for you to do is to go onto ukminingventures.com. And if you have a look on there, we have a whole section on how these cavities form. And it's probably better for you to, and there's some nice pictures and cards. You can go and have a look at it. And it's uh, probably a lot smarter than me describing it to you here because the, uh, the descriptions can be quite long and boring. 
but uh, do do go and have a look. It's metasomatism, and and uh, you know, go and have a look. A lot of dissolution around the folks, but uh, there's a very good description on there, written by uh, Phil Taylor, who did a great job on the article. So, thank you. So we have also, I guess, along the lines that are there any particularly many fractures and faults in the area, so that these hydrothermal fluids can go through. Yeah, again, go and have a look at the mm -hmm. order. We have a fantastic geology paper online all about the mines and it's uh, it's very well written um if you have any further questions afterwards after you've read it then, then feel free to email me perfect how long will it take to dream that piece um we have to get it down to the lab we have to uh, let it dry out we have to uh, then have a very careful look at it to see if there's any damage on any crystals and then we'll decide if we keep it as one big geode or if we trim it down into two or three major pieces, um, decisions, decisions. We'll, we'll see when we get to the lab. But uh, there'll be there'll be probably a week's worth of work to uh, to uh, make something out of it. Very interesting. And the last one for um, Art Friedman: Will you allow a small group of collectors access to collect at your mine dump? Um, we have to uh, we review we have to review the situation as it goes along with COVID. Um, at the moment, uh, you know, we don't have any visitors to the mine. Um, if somebody, you know, has a nice group, do drop me a line um, to my to my email, or or just contact us through the website. And um, you know, we're we're always trying to accommodate who we can. Thank you, Raquel. Did we Thank launch you. the poll? Oops, no. Oh, okay. Um, there it is. Okay, if anyone can uh, see that poll and answer uh, the questions in it, we're gonna ask those same questions to, um, to Ian and uh, to Deanna. Um, meanwhile, do we have any other questions that uh, we have from the viewers that we can ask? Mm, someone was asking about your headlight, Ian. Is that a regular headlight or is it a special one for mining? No, it's a special mining one. Yeah. How long are you going to be at the mine now? Are you going to be mining for the rest of the summer or with pieces like that, you go back and forth or the mining is still going? Well, we intend to be up here for, for the next couple of months because we're, we're really busy looking at other mining projects up here as well. We want to have a couple of other mines. So um, Deanna's, Deanna's traveling up tomorrow. Um, we've been away, I've been away for a few days now, so she's traveling up tomorrow with my daughter Verity and and Annabella. So um, it's going to be it's going to be a busy a busy few weeks and months ahead. <laughs> so I think, and, and I think, um, and I think after this uh, this interview, looking at all the comments that came through, it really does have to be the Annabella pocket. So. Thank you, uh, thank you, people. It's going to be the Annabella pocket. Yay! <laughs> we are I love it. Great. <laughs> More female names. I love it. Annabella pocket. Well, Ian, we need a photograph of Annabella uh, cradled within the uh, um, the geode of the floor right there. Yeah, that's the new cot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, sixteen days old and already um, a pocket named after her. That's absolutely. Promising. How old were you when the mine was named after you? Uh, 2017, so uh, three, three years, three years ago, so uh, 33. Okay, <laughs> well, she's got a 33 year uh, lead on you. <laughs> yeah, I could see that happen. Done what? Right. Good God, what, what, what chances does she have? <laughs> right, right. Brian, okay. I think you can go ahead with the pool. All right, let's go with the poll. Uh, Ian and Deanna, you guys, this is gonna be kind of a, a double complicated one because A, you guys have to answer in unison. Your answers have to be the same. So if there's a discrepancy, you guys need to quickly resolve it, okay? That should be interesting. <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> there, there might be some marriage counseling after this. <laughs> okay, here we go, 10 questions. Number one, James Bond or Sherlock Holmes? James Bond. James Bond. James Bond. <laughs> Tea or coffee, number two? Coffee. Coffee. Yep. Okay, number three, toilet paper, over the top or underneath? Over the top. 
as God intended it. A pub lunch or Michelin star dinner? Both. Both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got one. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Pub lunch or Michelin star dinner? Yeah, Michelin star. We can just treat ourselves sometimes. Yeah, definitely Michelin star. Okay. Whiskey or single malt scotch? Single malt. Single malt. Single malt. Wow, you guys are doing great. Peanut butter or Nutella? Neither. Mm -hmm. You got to choose one. Oh, well, peanut butter for me. Peanut butter for Diana. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Cats or dogs? Both. We have both. We can't. They are both here as well. You always have a favorite child. (laughs) Well, Wolfie then, because he has a Wolfie. Yeah, dogs. Okay, dogs. Desert island or rainforest? Desert island. Desert island. Desert island. Roast or barbecue? Roast. And the final question, classical music or rock music? Yeah, Ooh. classical. Classical? Classic. Okay. Raquel, are you ready? Let's see what uh, our viewers have responded with. Number one, James Bond or Sherlock Holmes? Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Tea or coffee? Tea. That's a good Tea. British. <laughs> <Buddy>. <laughs> Uh, toilet paper, over the top or underneath? Over the top. <laughs> Pub lunch or Michelin star dinner? Diana, you fail us. 83% for pub lunch. Oh. <laughs> well. I know. Whiskey or single malt scotch? Single malt scotch. Peanut butter or Nutella? Nutella. Nutella. Uh, Cats or dogs? Dogs. Dogs. Desert island or rainforest? Almost Thai, but desert island. All right. Good answers. Roast or barbecue? Roast. 74% people. Wow, they know them. Mm -hmm. Classical or rock music? I think they were misleading by the previous uh, color hair by, of Diana. So they, went <laughs> <laughs> so they went with rock. They went with rock. <laughs> oh, no. So they got one, two, three, four. They got five out of ten. Ooh. So <laughs> typically, that's a failure. <laughs> but we're going to say that all of you are champions anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, everybody who's participated, um, let's see, let me close this. Everybody who's participated, if you go to, uh, let's see, this website right here at the bottom of the web, at the bottom of the picture, you'll see a, a URL. That's basically the Crystal Classics uh, website. You have to scroll through and read the descriptions of the different specimens that are listed there. One of the specimens is going to have a completely outrageous description. And if you can identify which of the specimens on the website has the absolutely ridiculous description and be the first to email that to either Ian or Deanna at crystalclassics.co.uk, then the first person that emails the correct answer will win a fluorite from the Deanna Maria worth $1,000. Is that correct, guys? That's correct. And if we want to see it again, I can go to the case and show it again. That would be fantastic. Let's switch back to your camera. Right. So, have we swapped back to me? Well, Kel, can we uh, spotlight uh, Deanna? There we go. Uh, So, but you don't want to see me. You want to see the specimen. So let's just turn it around. So you want to see this one. Fantastic. Wow. Museums cannot participate. 
<laughs> but Raquel, you could come in under an alias. No one will tell. It's beautiful. Now, Deanna, Thank you so much. That you could take that out and we could see the color change. Uh, we see how much daylight we have left in order to do this. So let's have a look. If we can still do this, hang on. I just need to. Don't try that. No. Look at that. So previously ah. you saw that that was entirely green, kind of a yellow green. And here you can see it. It has uh, a very, very strong uh, blue with green uh, overtones there. And I think even the image is a little blown out there, but it is as fantastic as, as you can imagine it just by looking at it. Oh, somebody is saying the website isn't working for them. www.crystalclassics.co.uk. Did we put it with a .co.uk or with a .com on the end? Uh, it's no, it's www.crystalclassics.co.uk. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I have a HTTPS. Drop the uh, S. Uh, just drop all of that. Just type in www.crystalclassics.co.uk. Yes. De Diana, can you repeat on how to participate to win? Yes, of course. So basically, in order to win this beauty, you need to find within our web shop a specimen that has a completely wrong description and is wrongly labeled. So you have to spend some time browsing through and try to find a specimen that does not really work. Not the species and not the description, not the locality. <laughs> it will take you guys some time. We don't make it easy. It is a really nice specimen that you are able to win. So you need to put a bit of effort in. But in it is fairly obvious once you start reading the description, correct? It is very obvious when you look at it and when you read the actual species and the locality and the description. So too, someone... many pe too many people is right now on the website. Too many people wants to win. So <laughs> it's a little the bit... Website's crashing. Yeah, exactly. It's burning your website. <laughs> so that's a Good great prize. Down. Yeah. Thank you so much, Diana and Ian. Thank you yeah. so much for your time. It's a pleasure. It has, it has been a great uh, live minute talk. Thank you. Absolutely. We well, can't thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, very nice. Wonderful. All right. So for everybody out there, again, we want to thank you for joining us uh, this week at uh, Mineral Talks Live. Um, this episode will go live on YouTube in about four weeks. Tomorrow, we're going to be releasing episode number two, which was our interview with uh, Rob Levinsky at the Arkenstone. Uh, join us next week where we're going to have our guest, uh, Dr. John Rakavan, who's the professor of geology and earth science at Miami University. That's going to be an absolutely fantastic show. Uh, he's done some incredible work. And if you happen to be free this Friday, we have Happy Hour on the Rocks. That's going to be 12 p.m. Los Angeles time, 3 p.m. New York time, 9 p.m. Paris time, uh, 9 a.m. Hawaii time, if you happen to be uh, out here. But it's going to be co-hosted with Peter McGaw, and it's basically, we're just going to hang out and chat. So there's no official agenda. Uh, we're all going to be chatting with each other. No uh, reservation or registration required. The URL is at the bottom there, uh, Mineral Talks Live, or go.mineraltalkslive.com slash Friday happy hour. Hope to see all of you there. And for um, all of us, to all of you, thank you again for joining us. We'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. <laughs> See you on Friday. Bye. Bye. Bye.